two-day conference is by the time it comes to your turn, all your slides have already been presented by other people and all the messages have been delivered. So I'll be as fast as I can to, to let Matt catch up with, uh, with the rest of the day. So <laughs> I work for a company called Eris. Not, uh, Eris is a geriatrics of machine-to-machine -machine business. It's been around for, for many, many years. Uh, but we've recently expanded our business into Europe, and uh, I'll use the opportunity to give you a little bit of background about that. And uh, we also heard today quite a bit about um, the large numbers, uh, about the potential opportunities of machine to machine. And whilst most of the focus has been around the efficiencies that machine to machine will bring, we also think that it actually transforms the way enterprises, people, machines, objects uh, govern our life uh, moving forward. And with that, the business models of today will need to change dramatically in order to allow for the uh, values of machine to machine to emerge. Um, what is that? Uh, oh, it's here, sorry. So just give you a very quick overview of Eris. Uh, it's a company that is headquartered in Silicon Valley. It's a privately home, held. And to prove that numbers are correct, we've seen 100% growth year on year for the past four years. And this year, we're actually seeing a bigger growth than last year, where we're going to finish at uh, 3.4 million de connected devices on our global network. We are a solution provider for connectivity uh, as a main. Uh, and for that, we have developed a complete stack of machine-to-machine uh, -machine and connectivity requirements from the core cellular network all the way to the application enablement platform. Um, our key focus around here is to reduce the barriers for customers to enter, to make things cheaper, faster, better. I was actually very, very pleased today to see from my colleague from uh, Google talking about the connectivity cost should go to zero. We support that. Um, so in terms of the company, and I promise you that's my last slide about the company. Um, uh, we are the 10th largest provider of machine-to-machine uh, -machine connectivity around the world. Um, we have some key customers in our business for a small company of 110 people that we are uh, that is uh, noticeable. So we have brands such as Honda, Hyundai, Chrysler uh, using our network. We have medical device manufacturers uh, that see the quality of service that we deliver and the coverage that we provide as a unique differentiator for their business critical applications that they take to market. Um, and we also make our services available to mobile operators. And I was pleased today to hear that uh, we have signed a major cellular carrier to white label our services in India today. Uh, so we're doing something right in that space. Uh. <clears throat> so rate of change. I'm a mathematician, and I always work on rate of change. Um, Shamta, uh, a Belgian, I think is a Belgian economist, uh, came up with what they call the Shanta wave to show the impact of uh, new innovations and the rate by which the change takes place. So looking at that, the water power textile uh, started in 1785 as an as a innovation. And it took 60 years for the next step change in, in, in industry to take place with the introduction of steam and rail. But the next innovation only took 55 years. And then the innovation after that was electricity, which took 50 years for the next big innovation, which was petrochemicals. And in 90s, we had the digital networks starting to emerge. And we think that you know, we have a 30-year window from 1990. So that leaves us with 2020 being the end of that cycle for the innovation at the digital world. But each one of those innovations impacted the way enterprises, manufacturers, uh, services were delivered to the to the users, to the consumers. 
As I said, some of these slides have already been presented, and my colleague from Cisco couldn't remember how many zeros goes into a trillion. There are 12 zeros that go into trillion. Uh, and these are the statements from his boss. So there is no doubt that there is a huge market. There is no doubt that there is huge potential. But the key problem is that we can't realize that potential using evolutionary changes on our way of doing business. It really requires a transformation in the way we do business. You've seen that slide yesterday as well. Um, so I didn't put it in today. It was there yesterday. But the situation is that the market is very, very fragmented because we are in an innovation phase. Everybody's got an idea. Everybody coming up with something new and valuable and adds more complexity to the business model and more confusion in a way that customers, enterprises would want to consume that business, that uh, product. Uh, so we really think that doing things the way we are doing is actually a barrier to achieving those kind of numbers that we talked about earlier. But there's a shift. A shift is to move from, IoT enables a shift to move from a concept of a product to a concept of service. We are looking at an era where we can consume everything as a service. If you remember, a few years back, we had the concept of software as a service. Today, hardly anybody buys software licenses. Perpetual license is a thing of the past. It's a new business model that enabled enterprises to use more computing power than before, but as a service. Um, that having a service changes the interaction between the product vendor and the customer. Changes it from a transaction. We heard earlier on that the car industry uh, sells a car to a consumer. Consumer goes away, and once a year, he comes for a service. And what happens during that year, the car company has got very little knowledge about the experience of the user, about the feel, about what goes wrong, the performance of their product, and so on and so forth and has very little opportunity to improve that relationship with their customer. So <coughs> transactions moving to relationships are very, very important in IoT. We need to be thinking about relationships. And moving from a concept of product vendors to a concept of service ecosystems. What we see and what we think will happen uh, is that in not so distant future, if we listen to our friend from Google, uh, which I agreed with, by the way, is that we're going to have a concept of services of services being created. We're going to have service aggregators starting to emerge. They haven't come out as yet. And you need to cast your mind back to the era of uh, content, when content and content management came out. The biggest winners in that business were content aggregators, people who created content out of content. So today you go buy a security for your house, you have one business interaction with whoever provides you with that service, you get your smart meter from British Gas or utility company, you have another interaction over there, uh, you have your keys lost with another service that you can find it for you, and you have, where is my dog, with another service from somebody else. And it's painful to have all of those various services, various interactions, various contracts, various agreements in place. It would be the ideal situation for my house as a service. Somebody provides me with a service that pulls in the information from all of these silos and gives me a service surround, i.e., what goes on in my life. For an enterprise, it is the same. It's not that different. So we've got to be thinking about everything as a service. That's the real impact of IoT, in my view. 
So today, we have, as an example, we have two customers that interact directly with their end customers and use Eris or any other mobile operator to provide the connectivity for their service. Whilst both of those customers could be the same. It's the same customer. Yeah? It's the driver in the vehicle getting a service from GTX about his location and his family's location. And he gets his service from PeopleNet about his vehicle as well. But he has two separate contracts. He has two separate interactions. <coughs> and, oh, sorry, I need to go faster. All right, so I'll go fast. <laughs> so what we, what we are also seeing in, in that scenario moving forward is a variation on a business model that enables um, better monetization of the assets that are deployed where multiple users use the same device or the same device is used by multiple services and therefore, the cost of that device is monetized across multiple services. And that would get us to a point where this, the device is perceived to be for free. And we are seeing also a second variation starting to emerge, uh, which is the enterprise itself becomes a hub for providing services to the various parts of its enterprise by becoming service provide services of services, by creating services of services. And for all of that to happen, one of the key requirements which we have uh, invested in is the ability to um, portion cost and portion revenue uh, and collect that revenue and distribute that revenue amongst the various stakeholders in a background. Split billing, we consider that as a key requirement for these new business models to, uh, to be sustainable. And one of the other things that uh, you know, we saw Nest, we saw Fitbits, I'll go very quickly over that, but what I wanted to highlight is the statement here from Tony Faddle that says, we got more and more services revenue because the hardware sits on the wall for, the, for decades. What that means is that he can afford to sell a loss leader, the product itself, to its customer, whilst he's gonna generate his revenue because he will reuse the same asset again and again. We're also seeing some of the consumer devices being locked down for machine-to-machine -machine requirements. That is going to emerge where the same device is going to be used for multiple applications with multiple uh, vertical segments. So when you think about internet, internet of things, I think we need to be thinking about internet. Um, what that means is scale. Scale is absolutely fundamental. 13 zeros don't happen by themselves. All these applications and all these solutions need to be built at a scalable level. And again, I'll go back to the presentation by my colleague from Google, which I was 100% in agreement with, and we believe that's the right thing. So the thoughts, got one minute? Good. The thoughts that uh, we would like to leave you with is think about game-changing business models. As I said, evolution will not get us there. We need a revolution. Think about everything as a service, your car, your house, um, your health, everything as a service, your manufacturing as a service. Um, and remember that Internet of Things is first and foremost is about scale, is about internet. I have finished. We're we done on time? Thank you. Good. Perfect. Thank you.